what's up you guys I'm here today to do a tag I haven't done one of these in forever years and I always love tags because it's really fun to like compare um, you know the same kinds of things and see what everyone's got to say right so this one was made by our wonderful Ravenflower if you haven't seen the video I'm going to tag uh, oh tag oh see what I did there I'm gonna pop it down below so that you can go check it out if you'd like to do that um, but she created this tag she's really good for creating tags I think she's as she said she's done one every single year um, I don't know how long for maybe since she started her channel it could have been that long um, so and I believe this is her last one so if you know Ravenflower and you're wanting to get involved please do I'm gonna tag some people at the end of this but um, with tag videos, like I, I think most of the tags I've done, I've or maybe all of them even, I haven't been tagged in. <laughs> like if you want to do a tag video, you just do a tag video, right? So anyway, if you want to answer these questions too, please do. I'll leave them all down below for you. Um, let me know that you've done them as well. So pop it down below, put a link or something like that so we can all go check out each other's videos and see what we've got to say about the different things. Okay, so I've got my phone here. Look at this pretty cover. Oh my God, I love it. And let us, oh yeah, I'm going to show you this too, look. This is my screen saver, cover, theme at the moment. Um, I love it so much. It's the Cheshire Cat. Okay, I've become, I know, a ridiculous cat person. It's just sad at this point. But, okay, so let's get into it. Alright, so the first question is, New Year's resolutions, do you believe in them? This is always a weird question, right? So I absolutely, like, I set intentions. I think a lot of the time resolutions set us up for failure um, because it's like, oh, I want to change this thing about myself. And it's like we expect because we say it on New Year's that, like, magically we're just going to feel like doing this thing that we haven't been doing in our lives already, you know, like lose a bunch of weight or quit smoking or, like, whatever the thing is, right? So I think the idea of resolutions isn't a brilliant one, but... You know, I mean, it's setting goals and setting intentions for the year. Absolutely. I love, like, the fresh page, the blank slate, you know, and going in and doing that. Um, so question number two is why or why not? So that was kind of that, right? <laughs> um, question number three is what is your favourite colour slash S colours? Um, obviously, I really like purple. But I love all colours, to be honest. Like, I love being surrounded by colour. I love... I love natural colours as well, like I love browns and greens and like uh, earthy kind of colours, but I love really bright colours. I actually love the juxtaposition of the two together, so I really like my house for this. So I live in quite an old house, and I haven't shown it to you guys yet, but maybe in my vlog you've seen kind of a few different parts of the house that I haven't really shown on here. But there's a lot of exposed brick, a lot of brown everywhere. Um, which actually is an amazing backdrop for really bright colours. So I'm working at the moment to very slowly fill in the house with different colours, which look amazing against all of that brown. So I do love the two together and all colours, but purple is for sure my favourite. Okay, does, number four, does your favourite colour hold magical or emotional meaning for you? Uh, so purple does very much so. Um, you know, purple is associated with a lot of really amazing um, spiritual and also like leadership qualities. Um, oh, excuse me too. I'm burning up, you guys. It is so hot down under right now. Um, we're in the middle of a heat wave <laughs> and like for the last week it's been like 30 degrees, which is like that. I don't know. Um, and it's just been so warm. <laughs> Too warm for me. I'm a winter lover, right? Winter in Australia, but like autumn, early spring, you know, the cooler parts of the year. Anyway, so in NLP, um, I learned about this spiral dynamics thing quite some time ago. And the idea basically is it's kind of like a personality, sort of like a personality uh, category type thing, right? It, but there are different colours, right? So we all primarily have like a colour that we, um, that all our actions kind of spring from. So purple is one of the kind of base colours, but it's very much about um, like community and heart space and like being with the people and um, all this kind of thing. So 
I have to explain that very badly. But anyway, if you understand spiral dynamics, I'm very, very purple. <laughs> and so the purple like really suits that. Um, but I also love it for its spiritual qualities as well. Um, and yes, yeah, so purple does have a lot of meaning to me. Yes, even though I'm not good at actually conveying that all to you right now. So number five is do you use substances for divination or meditation? Um, I definitely have. I definitely don't all the time. I really like the difference in receptivity, the difference in the kind of messaging that comes through with different substances. Um, I think that it's not a great idea to have to use them, like to become reliant on them, to be able to, um, you know, perform divination or, you know, feel like you meditate or whatever. I've had friends that kind of have been in that space and it's not very healthy, um, as far as I've seen for everyone. <laughs> um, but it, it's very, very interesting. So I have used alcohol, um, not so much for meditation. I actually find that I don't meditate well with any substances that I've tried. Uh, but divination, yes. So alcohol um, and also cannabis as well. I've found that um, is always very different. Like the tone of what comes through and the connections that are made are so different. And I love, I love those experiences. And as long as I am not using those substances too often, um, I find that each time it's quite a profound experience um, but once you know you you use substance for a long time again in my experience it kind of dulls the it dulls the positive <laughs> that can come with having substance so I don't know if that makes sense but anyway uh, oh and fly sorry one of the examples is flying oils so I have used flying ointments as well um, I will link some kind of resource down below if you're not sure what that is because I know there's a lot of newer sort of witches that watch this as well. Um, but I'll link that down below um, for you to have a look at. I think my friend Keldon has some good videos on that so I'll find one and let you know. Uh, why or why not? We kind of went into that as well is number six. All right, number seven, what is your favorite part of your practice? Oh, that's a good question. I think that when times are rough, I have somewhere to go. Uh, so physically, like my altar, I really love that I have an altar space. There was a period of time when I first moved into this house that I didn't have an altar. It was about seven months, <gasps> you guys, after being used to having one, right, for years, about seven months that I didn't have any privacy here um, and I wasn't able to have an altar. And that was very, very difficult. <laughs> um, I really found that having a physical space to go to really means a lot to me. Like it's my church, right? Um, it's a space that I can go and just instantly like there's the, the emotional anchor there for feeling connected. But I mean also in, in connection in the various different ways. So talking to... Um, a power, a deity that I feel connected with, um, or nature, in fact, like going out and like being able to feel that sense of communion and connection and regeneration, I suppose. Um, that's probably my favorite part of my practice, I would say. I think that's a pretty good answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, number eight. Oh, what is the least favorite part of your practice? The least favorite part of my practice. So I've watched, um, I watched Ravenflower's video on this and I watched also Blue Knight's video on this as well. And they, I think they both said spell cleanup. Um, and, and that's a good answer, but I'm just trying to think if that's mine. Like I tend to be a little bit more chill with spell cleanup. Like I do what I need to do, but I also don't put pressure on myself to do it in a certain way. And like, you know, like it's, it's not always... Anyway, um, what's my least favorite part? I'm going to have to think about this. Okay, I've got it. Probably packing down my altar. So when I am uh, redoing my altar, I like setting it up again, but it's just such a pain in the ass to pack down. So that part is probably my least favorite. I actually often, when I feel like my altar needs a refresh, it often takes me a little while to actually get to it. Like I sort of sit with it for several days 
before I'm like, all right, come on, like it's time to like do this now. So because I have um, a fairly large altar and because there is so much stuff, right, this is the downside of maximalism. I am definitely a maximalist, not a minimalist. Um, and so that's, that's it. Yeah, that's probably my least favorite part. <laughs> All right, number nine, how do you feel your practice has grown over time? <sighs> what a question. So I'm not even sure how to answer that exactly. Um, it certainly has grown over time. It's grown with me as I have grown as a person. I think that's fairly natural with something that is so intrinsic as a spiritual practice, right? Uh, so, I mean, the biggest times I can think of where things have really shifted are obviously first, when I first began my spiritual practice, um, you guys, like if you're brand new to magic, there is, there is something uh, that is, com there is a magic that is completely unique to being a brand new witch. There is a sense of wonder that comes with your naivety you know being in that space where there's so much that you don't know and like this whole world has opened up to you and you're like oh my god you know it's like this huge thing um that's such a beautiful time and i really always try and encourage people who are new to magic to just try because i know i've been there but like try to just enjoy the process like just appreciate where you're at right now and it's one of those things that you never really do until you're back and you're out of that and you look back and you're like oh my god but truly there is something so magical that you will not experience again um, when you are a new witch so please if you are watching this any any new witches um really yeah just just appreciate this time um you will learn as you go on like it, it's a process it takes time you absolutely will um but try not to be too impatient to get to point b like just yeah so there was that um the the next time my practice really shifted was when i moved so about a year and a half i think after i had started practicing we moved to the other house and that's when i started making videos um but the big thing was that was a big shift sharing my practice publicly was really made a huge difference to how i experienced everything but also having space to actually set up an altar and have my privacy and have a whole room where i could kind of explore and do and like physically physically explore my my practice you know that that was huge um and then after that it was probably when i started uh, working in the magical industry so obviously i'd been sharing at that point for a few years i don't recall years and dates and things now but i don't think it matters that much but i'd been sharing publicly for a few years and then i started working in the magical industry and that was a big thing for me um it wasn't pleasant for quite some time i had massive imposter syndrome huge like for years it just like sat on my back you know and i am grateful for that now because that really really pushed me to study and to get into my own practice and to fucking learn right um but it was god it was horrible like just the whole time i just felt ugh, like the whole time i just felt like i was going to be found out like imposter syndrome right it's just a horrible yucky thing um but again there are some good side effects if you actually use it you can use it as fuel so that was a big thing, but kind of went on for some time. And then I have felt absolutely since I've moved here that my practice has shifted again. So as I mentioned, there was a seven month period where I wasn't able to physically be in my practice as I had um, before. And it almost was a reset, um, which I'm appreciative of. And yeah, as I grow and learn, my practice evolves. And at the moment it's changed into exploring some things from past spirituality past religious experience and bringing that and kind of weaving that in and kind of yeah it's quite interesting um but my practice has totally changed and i think anyone who's been practicing for a long period of time will say the same thing like you know it grows with you and it's it's a difficult question to answer um because it's like yeah, I don't know. So I, I would really love to hear actually what everyone else has to say on this. So do let me know if you create this tag because I want to see particularly this question. I would be interested in hearing from you. All right. Is there a show or movie that inspires you? Yes, there are shows and movies that inspire me. So I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget because, you know, you hate that when it's like 
oh what's that show or like oh my god I forgot to say that thing so um I really love American Horror Story Coven I'm watching that at the moment which is why I'm constantly talking about it um I've got a few episodes left we haven't seen Stevie Nicks yet so super excited for that <laughs> um but that one I found quite inspiring or I do even find inspiring now that I've been watching it again it hasn't given me anything tangible that I can kind of say, but um, there's a feeling in it, right? Like there's like this deep, um, I don't even know how I would describe it, but there is just a deliciousness that is in that show, that underlying magic, and it's gorgeous. Another one is the originals. I loved this show. So Noah Tempestari got me onto this show years ago and he originally, um, when he recommended it to me, I watched an episode, maybe two, and I was like, eh, it's not really for me, right? And then, I don't know, a few months later or something, I went back to it and I was like, oh my god. And I ended up binging the whole fucking thing. There's so many episodes. Oh my god. So many seasons and episodes. I love that show. So it's setting New Orleans as is a HS Coven, right? there is something in that city I think that calls to every witch like it, it must be everyone like feels it like oh my god I so want to go there one day it's definitely on my list um once I get out of this place <laughs> once I come to the states that's going to be one of the first places I go for sure so um yeah the original's amazing so it's like vampires werewolves witches right like I mean what's not to love and then the other one that I wanted to say is A Discovery of Witches. More the books than the TV show. I quite liked the books. I love the second book. That's my favourite. Um, and I know that they've just released the third season of A Discovery Witch of Witches in the States. They haven't here yet, I don't think. Um, so everyone's talking about it at the moment. All the witches that I know are like, oh my god, have you seen this show? <laughs> so um, that's a really good one. Um, and yeah, and I like that there are some ties to... Um, like a real occultism in there and stuff like that. Um, that's really fun. I think just immersing ourselves in these worlds like can just be generally inspiring, right? Now movies, the first one that ever um, was an inspiration for me was Bedknobs and Broomsticks. I grew up with that movie, watched it all the time and absolutely love that movie. Another one is The Love Witch. So that's a, a newer one. Um, gosh, probably from I don't know what five or six years ago now I'm not sure <laughs> um, but that's a really good one I loved that because that was very very real witchery like it obviously there's a lot of stuff in it that's very fantastical but there was a lot of realness in it and I really really liked that practical magic of course love the books love the books so much if you haven't read the books do yourself a favor okay now I know there's a lot of people who love the movie and then read the book and they're like uh, it is quite different take it for what it is but then you've got the other three books that come in around the story as well and the whole thing together oh my god I have written down so many different like recipes and different things from those books that have these have genuinely uh, genuinely inspired my practice um, I've actually got stuff that I have used from those books um, more than the movie itself although the movie is just amazing and I actually watched it a few months ago and just like <sighs> Yum, it's so good. Number 11, do you have a familiar? Yes, I do. Um, I have a spirit familiar, so a familiar that I work with on the spiritual, who does take the form of an animal but is not on this physical plane, right? Um, it's not one of my pets. Um, I do have three pets, however, as well. I have three cats now, which just, like, oh, it's so witchy to me. I've had one cat for years. He's 11 now. Um, but, yeah, we've got some other cats now. And it's actually, I really like having multiple cats. I can't believe this. Like, I never thought I would want many around. But it just is really, really lovely. So, yes, I have a familiar. And I also have pets. And Bear comes and stays as well. So Bear is a dog. Um, and he comes and stays, you know, fairly frequently and it's really lovely to have him around as well. We were thinking about getting a dog too but I'm like we'll just settle in with the three cats first. We'll see how we go <laughs> before we add more animals into the mix. Number 12 is would you recommend any YouTube channels? And the answer to that is yes. So if you go onto my page or whatever like if you click on my name down below and go in there and click channels um, I have uh, I don't know how many there, maybe like 16 or something different channels there. Um, all of those are ones that I definitely recommend. Um, but I will say just now while we're here, um, I did write some down that I specifically wanted to recommend to you. Um, so the first one is Raven Ways. Um, 
this witch is amazing. So she, um, she's been on YouTube for a long time and she gets on often and she'll do these longer sort of style videos. I think a lot of the time they're live um, and she just gets on there and she chats and she just shares her wisdom and her knowledge and she has so much of it. So I love actually sitting down and listening to her while I'm kind of maybe doing something else but I've got my notebook there, right? And then I'll be like, oh, that's really interesting and I write that down. Um, so she's incredible. Um, so much wisdom, so much knowledge and she just kind of puts it out there. She's also very big into astrology um, so she shares a lot of stuff about that. Um, so I would highly recommend that you go over and check out her channel if you have not already. The next one is George Hares. Love George's channel. So he he's been on YouTube as well forever. Actually, I think everyone... Oh, no, there's a few... Yeah, no, everyone's been on here for a while. <laughs> um, so George's channel, he he's a British witch. Um, he's actually recently released a book as well, Barbarous Words. I've got it in my to read section and I'm so excited to get to it. Um, cannot wait. Um, but every time he uploads something, I'm like, yes, like I'm so excited. And he's really good. He doesn't upload great big long videos like some of us. So they're always kind of like... 10, 15 minutes, something like that most of the time. Um, and he just always has something terribly interesting to share. And he very much speaks from his own experience, his own practice. And that is something that I really love. And I feel like we're losing a little bit of in kind of um, social media, which space, you know, there's a lot of yeah, we'll talk about that soon. But George is wonderful. Um, the Sunshine State Witch is the other one. Love her channel. So this is Brittany. Um, every time she uploads, I'm like, oh, yay. And I just enjoy just like sitting in her space with her. For me, she feels very like like it, my time OG uh, YouTube, you know, where it's just, I just get a good feeling when I'm in her space with her. And she's always sharing um, things from her own personal practice and like, this is what I'm learning now, this is what I'm thinking, this is my process that I'm going through. Um, so I absolutely love her channel. And the other one is um, The Witch of Enchantment, who is Justin and their BFF, so you know. Um, but he's always, he's hilarious to start off with. Um, but he's the same way, like he's always sharing from his, you know, what's going on in his world and what he's learning about and this kind of stuff. Um, and he's just madly entertaining. So I really, really enjoy his channel as well. So definitely check him out if you haven't yet. And the last one I wanted to recommend is Jasmine Ambrosia. So Jasmine, I believe, started her channel maybe around the same time I did, roughly there. Um, she's fantastic, you guys. So this is a witch who um, is deep in her practice. And you can just tell from the things that she shares, right? The way she comes across. I actually did a live with her not too long ago on her channel. Um, so I will link that down below as well if you guys want to go check that out. Really, really fun interview. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, and we're going to do some other stuff together as well. I'm just like, the way I would describe January in my life right now is chaos right? So it hasn't quite happened yet. But um, yeah, she shares a lot of really awesome stuff. Um, and she has a different perspective from a lot of witches as well, which I really appreciate. Um, so and she's just so gorgeous, you guys like, oh my god. Um, yeah, so go and check her out. Um, she is absolutely awesome as well. And next question, I suppose, my goodness. Number 13, name something you must do daily for your mental slash emotional well-being or for your practice. So, uh, well, something that I do every single day is that I leave um, offering for my spirits. Um, that's something I do every single morning and have done now for three or four years every single day. Um, and that's like an anchor of my practice. And it's something that is just like, um, it helps me feel connective. Um, but it's also like a simple little win, right? We talked about this in my daily practice video some time ago. Um, but it's just, it's one simple thing I can do that makes me feel connected and like, yes, I am in my practice. And that's something that actually helped me to grow my practice over time and to do all, branch out and do all these other things that I wanted to do. Um, but that is my key, my core. I always, always do that. And as I am pouring the waters, because there's several places in the house, usually it's a water offering is the daily one, um, and there's several places throughout the house that I leave those, um, I'm saying gratitude. So I'm, you know, that's part of, has become part of the practice as well, um, to say gratitude and just kind of, I guess, centre in that moment as well. And so that's the mental health side, right? Just take stock and be here. Um, that's very important. 
Um, and other than that, I mean, it always changes, um, but I do find if I spend just a few minutes at the altar, that's really, really helpful mental health wise as well. And that's kind of the same thing. It's centering, it's meditation, it's just coming into alignment with self and, you know, breathing, essentially. All right, what is something that started as an obstacle but you can now see as a blessing. Um, I, I'll go back to what I said earlier, and that's imposter syndrome. Um, I very much found that um, sharing my practice publicly, so on YouTube and also through work, um, although I will say mm, they, they, would, they were different experiences of imposter syndrome, the YouTube was, I think, far worse. I, I let it get to me a lot more, and it wasn't as helpful. And when it stepped up a notch, when I started working in the industry, um, like, you know, eventually I broke through. <laughs> it took a really long time. Um, and that's actually part of the reason I stepped away from YouTube was just, I, well, it was imposter syndrome, but I just felt like, like everyone was in my practice. Like I just, it was too much. I had to like just uh, separate myself and say, okay, my practice is just for me. I don't want to be thinking about stuff I'm going to say and do and, and work. My work is very different. Like it's a lot, it feels less connected to me. I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels less me. Like this feels more vulnerable than that. Um, so that was definitely, I mean, it's not specifically about my practice really, but it's adjacent to it. It became entangled in. So I'm answering that as my, I was going to say as my question, as my answer to the question. Um, yeah, imposter syndrome. So eventually sitting with it, coming through it, um, has been amazing. And it's something that I still work on, um, but it doesn't plague me and it doesn't, it doesn't stop me like it used to, you know, it doesn't chain me like it used to. So that's incredible. So I've done tremendous growth from that whole experience. Number 15, which do you prefer YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok? So, um, as a consumer, like as someone who uses platform, um, YouTube for sure. I don't mind Instagram, I don't really use Facebook, and I don't really use TikTok. <laughs> um, Facebook, I just kind of, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't know, eh, I just not there anymore, you know? I just, um, there's nothing bad about it and, you know, all that. Um, I know there's a lot of people that say, oh my god, so much terrible stuff on there, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I just stopped scrolling on there years ago and kind of haven't, you know, every now and again I might do a tiny scroll, but that's about it. Instagram... Yeah, I, I don't like the way it makes me feel very much as a consumer. I will scroll on there from time to time, um, but I found that a few years ago when I was doing it quite a lot, like it was making me feel really shitty. Um, and I just, yeah, I just don't spend a whole lot of time on there. I, I kind of want realness um, and Instagram's hard that way because it doesn't, it doesn't reward realness, right? Like Instagram wants to see your best side and that is all, and that's what we want to see. So I really enjoy taking photos for Instagram and that sort of thing, um, sort of playing around with that. As, as a creator, I enjoy it. Still my second favorite there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't love it as a consumer. I love, love YouTube. Although I found with YouTube over the years, the last few years, the content's really like, um, I find it harder to find things I really enjoy that are newer. Um, I think I, I was realizing this recently. I think a lot of that is because of Patreon. Um, like a lot of creators, um, as they uh, have every right to do, have gone on there to create some more cash flow, right? Like, it, you guys, it takes so much time <laughs> to create videos is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, get some cash for doing that, right? Fantastic, love that for you. Um, but the issue is I think that a lot of people, and not all, not all, but there are a lot of people who are putting great content that used to be out on YouTube behind that paywall, um, and then, you know, the stuff's gone down, you know, just that, that it takes so much energy creating videos and it's not going onto YouTube anymore. So that kind of sucks. Um, just again, from a consumer perspective, you know, we were so blessed before with all of this free, amazing content, you know, and the way that we share now is very different. Like there's like, uh, you know, the algorithms and all this bullshit that everyone has to think about, um, you know, trying to get their stuff out there because, hey, they're putting in so much effort, like, we want people to see it. 
Um, and I think that that's really damaged a lot of the content that's out there. Um, I think there is incredible content being made now, especially for new witches, because that is where the eyeballs are, right? Like the, the industry, the people who are coming in, the, the numbers are in new witches. So that's what a lot of content is, um, what's the word? aimed at, like aimed at people who are brand new. So gosh, as a new witch, I just would have just loved <laughs> the way that YouTube is now so much. Um, but as someone who's been around for a while, it's like, you know, there's only so much of that stuff I kind of want to listen to. I want to hear realness. Like I want to hear your experience. I want to hear what you're doing and learning and finding out and like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's how I feel about that. YouTube. <laughs> I really like YouTube. Um, although I feel like actually at the start of this year, I don't know if you've noticed this too, but there seems to be an uptick again in people posting um, and people who have been here the whole time, by the way, posting more. And there are people, I will say, I really want to say this, there are people, thank you so much, who have been posting like throughout all of this crazy bullshit that we've been going through um, and creating fantastic content. Um, it just used to be, I used to find that every single day, just about, it was like, oh, I'm so excited to watch this video. Save for later, save for later, save for later. Like all these videos. And now it's a lot less of that. Like it's, it's not every day anymore that I find a video and I'm like, oh my God, yes. Anyway, this is going to be a really long video. <laughs> okay, so number 16, what do you feel is missing from our witchy community? I feel like I've already touched on a few things here, haven't I? There was something else I was going to say before. Yeah, I think just that. I'll just say that. I'll stick with that. There was a rant I was going to do, but I'm not going to do that. So just people sharing from their own experience. Um, and it, it is really hard because again, you know, we want the eyeballs and we want to, we're trying to do new things. Things are growing and changing and whatever. And that's awesome. But you know, for my own selfish purposes, I feel like, you know, YouTube five, six years ago is what's missing. <laughs> and I know that people back then were saying the same thing about YouTube five, six years before that, you know? So I think it's just one of those things. It's like when it's your heyday or whatever, um, you always miss that, whatever it was that was going on. So yeah, I really miss the, the vlogging and the chatting and the, the things. Um, I actually go back through a lot of, um, when I'm really just wanting to like binge YouTube and just like really have a YouTube session, I often go back and watch old videos of people because that's the kind of stuff that I really love and I'm really into. So that's what I feel is missing. Um, I think that Instagram in a way really destroyed YouTube <laughs> in that regard um, because then it became more about aesthetics and all this kind of stuff and things got a little bit more boxed and packaged and like looking gorgeous but like what's really inside, you know? Yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about that. Um, number 17, how much space do you use for supplies and spell work? I'm very lucky. I have quite a lot of space. I have a full size room here. Um, it is like a small size bedroom, um, but it, I mean, it's huge compared to what I used to have, <laughs> like massive. My other room, you guys don't even understand how tiny it was. It was like a study. It was a study. Um, I actually had only one witch ever come over to my house at the other place. And that was Alex, um, who is house of witchcraft now, I think. Um, I'm so sorry. I will link him down below, but he was wonder weirdness and witchcraft before. And he came to my house once and he was like, wow, it really is tiny. This room, like it looks so much bigger <laughs> when I was doing videos and stuff. Like there was just not space. Right. And I had this massive thing as well, this huge altar in there, which took up literally a third of the room. Like it was insane. Um, but anyway, so I have a room. I'm so blessed. I feel really, really, really grateful for that. Um, it's been really nice to sort of stretch and move into that. Um, and I also, so I keep all my stuff in here, but I also have a bunch of stuff out in the kitchen. So I've got heaps of herb jars out there, uh, you know, and various things that I'll use for spell work um, as well. Number 18, how many altars do you have in your home? Um, I've got this two, three, four, kind of six. There's two that are like kind of altars, like they are altars, but I don't really work them a whole lot at the moment. So they don't feel super altery, <laughs> if that makes sense. I guess they're kind of more shrines, um, but I've got three in here. So one is again, more of a shrine, but it like was 
feels more of an altar. I don't know. Um, and then I've got two in here and I've got one by my front door. And then I've got another one in my kitchen, which is where I leave one of the offerings. And it's kind of not really an altar, but it is because it consistently sees spiritual work happening there, right? Um, but I haven't like prettied it up and things like that. And then one in my bedroom as well. What is your favorite Sabbat? Um, so I don't uh, follow the Sabbats I've mentioned before, um, although I'm always aware of them and I always do stuff with them when um, for work as well, um, and that's predominantly for the Northern Hemisphere Sabbats. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware, they are flipped down here because our seasons are literally the opposite. So whatever season you're in, in the Northern Hemisphere, we are in the exact opposite season down here and therefore the opposite Sabbat as well. Um, I don't think anyone can go past Sawain, right? Um, although the vibe down here is very different. You see, even though Halloween um, is a, a consumerist, uh, secular holiday, it brings attention and energy to that Sabbat. Now down here in the Southern Hemisphere, at least in Australia where I live in particular, we don't have anything going on at that time of year. The only thing that happens in the deep autumn is that everyone starts bitching that it's cold, right? That's all. We don't have harvest festivals, we don't have, I don't know, all the wonderful amazing things that happen in the Northern Hemisphere. So um, yeah, it feels a lot more uh, very personal and quiet Sawain down here, I would think, um, as compared. So that kind of sucks. It would be really nice if we had a secular holiday aligned with it as well, but that's cool. Um, other than that, I actually love Lithmus. Now I got this name, um, from a dear friend. I actually, what's her YouTube channel? I'm just going to quickly get a YouTube channel name because I want to actually say one second. Okay, Corrigan the Crone. So I'm going to link her channel down below as well. Um, she's a fellow Australian pagan witch. Um, and so she, the other day, um, put up on Instagram a post and she was calling it Lithmas, right? So Litha and Christmas together, which is when it happens down here in Australia, right? In December, that's the middle of summer. It's hot right now. So hot. And she called it uh, so combine those two and I loved that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to use that. And it's so weird because I have my entire life hated summer, hated it, right? But the last, since I became a witch, since I was like, yes, witchery world, I'm here doing the thing. I have had a lot more appreciation for summer. I chose to start seeing and appreciating the beauty in every season and just appreciating it for what it is. Um, and I love the party vibes of that time of year. So gosh, it must be so different in the Northern Hemisphere when it's the middle of winter and I really want to experience a white Christmas one day, right? But here it's the middle of summer. So it's like huge party vibes. So like, it's like barbecues and everyone's sitting outside and the sun doesn't set till like 9.30 or whatever. Everyone goes to the beach, like, and then you've got New Year's, like, you know, what is it? Like a week and a half later or something. Is it less than that? whatever it is, um, you know, and that's a huge party as well. And again, it's often hot. So everyone's just out and it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's really fun. So actually, weirdly, I think that's my favorite Sabbat. Although again, I don't hugely celebrate the Sabbats, but I will use them for magical purposes if I need to. Like I'll harness that shit. Absolutely. Number 20, do you prefer tarot, runes, oracle deck or pendulum? Um, I love my pendulums. I really do. There's one in particular that I have a very close relationship with. Um, but I do really love my tarot decks. Um, I love Oracle as well. I actually am not super into runes um, yet. This is what I love about magic though, right? Like there is always so much to explore. So like in a few years, I'll probably be all over that shit. <laughs> but for now, tarot is probably my absolute favorite. And then Oracle. And I really love my pendulum as well. And number 21, are you out of the broom closet? Ah, oh, yes, I forgot about this question. Um, I'm actually not, which is weird, I know, because of what I do. Um, I was, I was debating whether to talk about this or not, but it's in, it's in the bloody questionnaire. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I began on YouTube to share with other people because uh, I really wanted to talk about this amazing thing happening in my life and, you know, magic and all that. 
um, and I didn't know anyone else that was into it. I actually have a friend who has recently got into witchery, which is super cool. Although she's always known about kind of the weird shit I've been up to. Like she's been totally fine. So like so friends, friends have known. So I'm out to friends, but family, no. Um, my family, my husband's family, no. Although we haven't talked about it, but they've been in my room and seen and like just like what the fuck is happening here you know um but it's not something that I, I actually really don't like talking about it with people who I guess aren't open to it I was gonna say who aren't witches as well and don't kind of know where I'm coming from but I've talked about it with my other friends who weren't either and that was fine so yeah we just haven't had the big talks yet um I feel like it's coming. I feel like it's coming. Like, they all know that I'm not a Christian. They all know that, like, there's something up with me, right? But we haven't had the specific talks yet. And my family in particular, like, I come from a family where we kind of sweep shit under the rug. You know, it's just like, we'd rather just, let's just pretend... <laughs> that this is not a thing it's not healthy at all and you know but that is kind of the background I come from so my mum's brought up things a few times and I've been like oh no like that's not a thing and okay yep and it's dropped you know so yeah but I, I feel like um and I know the energy for this year too is all about like you know uh, the veil lifting let's say secrets coming out so um I'm not actually out of the closet and that's something that I didn't know to talk about or not because of everything that I do. And it's super weird, right? It's super weird that I'm not, but, um, yeah, there's the truth. And the last question, thank you for sticking with me this whole time. Number 22, who are you going to tag in this video? Okay. I want to tag Keldon in this video. Keldon, if you're up for it, I would love to see this video from you. Um, I would also like to tag Rebecca, good wife. Um, if you would like to do this tag, I would really, really love to see your answers to these questions. Um, Lennon Smith as well, my love, if you're watching, I would really love to see you do this video. Um, the Sunshine State Witch, uh, Brittany, and The Witch of Enchantment, Justin, both of you guys, I'd love to see you do this. Um, I also want to tag, um, Jem, who I can't remember what their channel name is right now. Um, because it's changed a couple of times. Hang on one second. Okay, this is super annoying. I can't find their channel and, okay, but Jem, if you're watching this, I would love to see this from you. And I just realized I haven't seen any of your videos around for a while. So I hope you're doing well and you're all good. Um, Yeah. I hope you're good. <laughs> and um, yeah, make this tag if you want to. Um, and the last person um, is Laura Dalligan. I would really love to see you, sweet Laura, if you want to do this tag. I would love to see that from you. Um, but again, if I haven't tagged you, like, please do the tag. Like, who cares, you know? Just get in there and let me know because I will come over and I will watch it and I'm sure other people would love to come and see too. All right, you guys, thank you so much for sticking with me. This was a marathon. <laughs> um, I love you so much and I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video. Sending you so much love and many, many blessings. Bye.